heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you have a testimony, please go to the back of the auditorium and meet with a minister. If you have a testimony. Hallelujah.
therefore let us offer sacrifice. Someone who believed that the Lord Almighty will wrought his wonders in her life today. Shout hallelujah. That's someone who will believe that the Lord will wrought his miracle in his life today. Shout hallelujah. And so shall the Lord do for every one of us in the name of Jesus. You won't go without having an encounter with the Lord today in the name of Jesus. That God that you have come to meet this morning will show himself to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of the service, you go back rejoicing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name. Testimony time. It is time for us. To testify to the glory of God for what he has done in our life. So we have uh, five people here this morning to testify to the goodness of God. We have a uh, sister Eileen Ajua. Sister Eileen Ajua, please come forward. We have a uh, sister Amaka. We have uh, Winifred Pamela. We have all. We have uh, Ife Olua. We have uh, Neka. Sister Nneka, Sister Ifeoluwa, Pamela Amakan, and Sister Ellen Ajua. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is so good to me. I've enjoyed his mercy once again. He's only share and I want to thank him. This week that just ended, anytime I want to pray to God, something will just tell me to be thanking God. I will be praising God. I have the intention to ask God so many things. But when I get on my knees, I will be praising God. And after praising God, I will say, I could not ask anything. But on Wednesday, something happened. I got a call yesterday night from my husband. He said he had a terrible accident. And the car finished. He said he was going to send the, the picture. I got a call and he said, thank God that God saved him. The, God, the Lord that I served saved my husband from death. Untimely death. He said I will not become a widow. I want to say, Father, I thank you and I appreciate God. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for protection and me and my mom this morning. We're on our way to um, God is Good for six o'clock bus. For the bus, for the bus that was going to Bowery for six o'clock. And on our way, the bonnet just opened and this windscreen just broke. So I just want to thank God because the windscreen did not. He didn't harm any of us. I just want to give God all the glory. May he be exalted forever. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Maka. I want to thank God for saving me from an accident on Monday on my way to work and also blessing me financially. Well, I don't want to go into details, but I just want to return all the glory to God for what he did for me. We bless the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Wilfred Pamela. I want to thank God for his mercy and his grace. Um, I asked God for a birthday gift. Yesterday was my birthday, and last week I got a meal that I, I got another job. And I just want to thank God for everything, for His grace and His blessing. To bless the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to thank God for the life of my immediate elder sister that was very ill. We didn't know what was wrong with her, but when we got to the hospital, or rather, when they got to the hospital in Worry, they said she was just shortened blood. She was short of blood. And then, it's not like she was eating very well and every other thing. When they called me, I was very disturbed. I'm like, ah, what's happening? Is it that you're not eating? She said she's eating, no. So she was just drying up. She said she lost sugar. She was just drying up. Nothing. But just, so I, 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 was, I was really devastated and I, then I asked my sister, I said, please, you should just go into prayer. This is, this is a temptation. Like, you should pray about it. And then they prayed about it. I prayed as well. You know, after a few days, they called me and said, ah, that she's eating fine. And then nothing, but they said that the blood is okay now. And then she's doing very fine. And also for the life of my dad too, he called me like three days ago. He told me he, he kicked his foot while he was coming from shop. And then he said he got to the hospital. They think a small um, scratch and then started expanding. So he, had, he was scared and he got to the hospital. They told him too, he was shot in blood. For no, for no reason. I'm like, ah, Daddy, what is going on? So he said that devil is just playing trick on himself. That he cannot do anything. But he's fine now and he's doing better. Hallelujah. So I just want to give God all the glory. Because I told him I'm not ready for burial. So he should not die now. We bless the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Sister Joan Mocha. And I want to thank the Lord for saving my life on Wednesday. I bought the bus. I was going home. I was going back to Aja. And um, 10 minutes later, I realized that everybody in the bus fell asleep. Me, I was battling with the sleep. At the point, I now shut my eyes, and I, that was all I could remember. So when I opened my eyes, uh, it was on a lonely road, and there was bush everywhere. I now tapped the driver. I said, sir, this is not a road to Acha. What was happening? They were speaking Yoruba, which I don't understand. So the, the only thing I could remember they said that I heard was, Edge, which I believe it means please. So the next, they just stopped the bus and just pushed me out of the bus. They took my bag. So I crossed over to the Merrill and I asked them, ask somebody, please, where is this? They said that is the Guru Maharaji in Ibadan. <laughs> so I just crossed over. A lady now saved me. She took me in her vehicle and dropped me. And to God Almighty be the glory. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Brethren, let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's return glory, let's return honor, let's return adoration to the God Almighty. He could only be God. Let's appreciate him. Let's bless his holy name. Father, we say thank you. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give all adoration, Daddy, for the testimonies of your children. Daddy, we say be thou exalted, O Lord. Thank you, Father, for saving the husband of our sister, Father, from death, O Lord. Daddy, we say thank you. Thank you for saving your daughters from accidents, O Lord. Daddy, we say thank you, Daddy. Thank Thank you for saving your daughter, so love from kidnapper. Daddy, we say, blessed be your name. For healing, Daddy, will return all the glory. Will return honor, will return adoration. Daddy, we bless your holy name. For all the testimonies, so Lord. Daddy, we say, be thou exalted. Thank you, mighty Father. We pray that all of them will be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Testimony will not cease in your house in the name of Jesus, so Lord. Thank you, King of glory. Once again, accept our thanks, so Lord. Be thou exalted. For in Jesus, mighty name we have given thanks hallelujah let's just rise on our feet if you listen to those testimonies you know that this can only be God this can only be God all the testimonies pointed to the same thing. All the testimonies pointed to the same thing. Let us take the song, What Shall We Say Unto the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. 
unto the Lord. Oh, we have to say, is What shall we say? What shall we say? morning today we are not looking for somebody that is lost we are not consoling people of death in their family just give God praise bless the name of the Lord I appreciate what the Lord is doing Father we just want to say thank you we just want to appreciate your doing you continue to show your presence and your power. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. Daddy, we love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have turned. Please hold your neighbor and pray for them. I say, in the name of Jesus, they will not visit you to mourn with you. Go ahead and pray for them. People will not visit your house to mourn with you. They will not visit your house to mourn with you. You will not suffer loss. You will not suffer loss. No one in your house will die before their time. The blood of Jesus will protect you. The Almighty God will be your shield. God will watch over you. God will watch over your family. You will not cry. You will not weep. You will not mourn. You will not mourn. This year will be a year of joy for you. It will be a year of celebration for you. It will be a year of testimonies for you. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you. Because we can see that this can only be God. For every member of this church, Father, I pray that your shield will be over us. Amen. Please protect us and our families. Amen. Don't let us receive people to mourn in our house. Amen. This year, from the beginning to the end, shall be a year of celebration. Amen. A year of testimonies. Amen. A year of victories. Amen. A year of promotion. A year of joy unlimited. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Please lift up that Bible. Let's lift up that Bible unto the Lord. And together we say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, 
indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. While still standing, please open with me to Acts of Apostles. And together we'll read chapter 9, chapter 9 verse 13 to 15. Acts of Apostles, chapter 9. Together we read verse 13 to 15. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. This morning, I believe God wants us to go to part four. Part four of the sermon titled, Before I Formed Thee. And I am confident that there is at least someone here that the world doesn't yet know who you are. They don't know how great you will become. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the greatness that God has called your own, you will surely attain in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take the song, Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Oh. have your way. Put your word in my mouth. Bless your people. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. God bless you. Please take your seat. 
and good morning. I hope you had uh, a blessed week. And this new one you are going into shall even be greater for you in Jesus' name. Every week will be better than the one before it. And those that are joining us online, I welcome you as well. Wherever you may be all over the world, God Almighty will send your own blessing to you in Jesus' name. Whenever you hear your own word, please say a loud amen. The Bible says, be it unto you according to your faith. If you come to church thinking it's just a social event, so it, be, it, so it will it be unto you. But if you come to God believing that God can help you and that God has a word for you, just as you have believed, so also shall it be. But my prayer for you is that today, God himself will touch you. Before I form the part four, the passage that we read, Ananias said to Jesus, Jesus, this is a bad man. This man, Saul, is a murderer. This man is a persecutor. Jesus, I know you are God in man, in human form. But on this occasion, Jesus, you have made a mistake. All those who say they have made a mistake concerning you. All those who say it's a mistake to promote you. God Almighty will silence them. God decided to promote a man called Saul. And the people around that should rejoice with him on the day of his promotion. They stood up and said, no, God, you cannot promote this one. This one is bad. And the passage we read, Jesus answered and said, go your way. This man is good. This man is going to be a mighty evangelist. The world does not yet know who you are. The world does not yet know how great you will become. But I pray and prophesy over your life. Whether the world sees it or not, you will become great in Jesus' name. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 25, we put, that, put it on the screen. Joshua 6, 25, it tells us that Joshua saved Rahab, the Alot, alive and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel unto this day. Rahab was an harlot. What is the other name for harlot? A prostitute. But today we are mentioning the name of Rahab as a point of contact. If God can use a prostitute to become a point of contact, surely God can use you. If God can use a prostitute to bring Israel to the land of promise, surely God can use you. The people around Rahab, they saw a prostitute. They saw a bad woman. They saw a sinner. But God saw a mighty deliverer. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. That the world have not yet seen anything yet. The great you will manifest in Jesus' name. So that's point number one. The real you. The real you will manifest. The real you will manifest. Because the Bible tells us very clearly. It says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Is there anybody here who believes that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? As you are believed, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone who is this saying to you, you are a useless person. Say to them, may God open your eyes. Do you understand? If your husband is saying to you, you this woman, you are useless. Just laugh, laugh. 
and say, honey, don't worry, God will open your eyes. And if you are a woman, you are saying to the man, you are a useless man. Man, don't fight. Don't quarrel. Just say, my wife, calm down. God will soon open your eyes. Because what you see is not necessarily the reality. What you see is not necessarily the reality. And that's why I pray for you one more time. The real you will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, your mistake is not irreversible. Because some of you may have reached the point to say, you know, I made a mistake in life. And that mistake has brought me to where I am. And that mistake has made it impossible for me to, to fulfill destiny. You lie. There is no mistake with God that cannot be corrected. You have killed before. Join the club of Apostle Paul. You are fornicated before. Join the club of Rahab. All of these people we are bad people. But God reversed their error. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever mistake you have made in your life, God will reverse it. Amen. Number three, your past will not determine your future. I thought I would hear a loud amen. amen. I said your past will not determine your future. Amen. That is the reason why Jesus said to Ananias in verse 15 of that chapter 9, Acts, he said, Ananias, keep quiet. Because Ananias was saying, we know this man to be a murderer. And we know that murderers cannot prosper. We know that anyone who has been a murderer, God will not promote. That's what Ananias was saying to Jesus. When Jesus said it's time to promote Paul, Ananias was looking at the past of Paul. Jesus was looking at his future. All those who are looking at your past, may God open their eyes to look at your future. Yeah. I gave the example this morning of daddy in the Lord, our daddy in the Lord, Pastor Adeboye. And he said his lifestyle before I became born again, it's not different from my own lifestyle. Plenty mistake. A life that was completely useless life. Life, life that was without any boundary. He, he described himself. He, he shared it publicly many times. He said anytime he sees a woman, he must lie with her. He said the only, the only thing he didn't do was any woman that is married, he stayed away. You had him share it at Holy, Holy Ghost Congress several times, Holy, Holy Ghost Service. He shared it publicly. The same thing was my own life. I was so bad. Everywhere I go, if I have not found a woman, I cannot sleep well. My life is like I am, I, it's meaningless. You look at me now, you say, is it true? I can only say, I thank God. I can only say, I thank God. Those who used to, in the Enugu State University of Technology, they used to know me. University of Portacourt. All of those places. I used to be a customer. But somehow, God did not allow my past to determine my future. I pray for somebody here this morning. Your past will not determine your future. I shared in the first service the story of our daddy who had a similar background. He said, when he became general overseer, a woman had a problem. 
A child had not spoken ever since the child was born. By that time, they expect the child to be speaking freely, but the child had not uttered one word. So this, she decided she needed God. This child needs God. So she went to church and said to them, I would like to see the pastor. They said, well, wait. The pastor is busy. After a while, we'll take you there. Eventually, they took the woman inside. And then she saw Pastor Adeboye. She said to him, I want to see the pastor. And Pastor Adeboye said, I am the pastor. He said, no, you can't be a pastor. Because you and I know the things we've done before. That woman used to be one of his girlfriends. So, and then she said to the man, you can, if you pray, God can answer. Well, you know, that is the way he told him, well, don't worry, what is the problem? As far as the woman was concerned, she was looking at the past. She was looking at the past of that man, that the Jew. That this man is a useless man. But God was looking at his future. She said, you cannot pray and God will answer. I pray for you. Those who think you can never be good, God Almighty will disappoint them. No problem, my sister. What is the situation? This, my child has not spoken ever since he was born. Now he's now old. He still can't talk. They don't worry. There's a God in heaven. The man, they said that he can pray and God will answer. He said in the name of, before he said Jesus, the young man said, Amen. The man that has never spoken in his life before, the boy that has never spoken before, there is a God in heaven. Rise on your feet and say, Father, don't let my past destroy my future. Go ahead and cry to the Lord. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. That will not allow your past to destroy your future. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. That God will make your future to be joyful. No matter what you have gone through in your life, no matter the experiences you have gone through, God will make your future to be great. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Number four, the sins of yesterday or today will not block your blessing. It's a prayer for somebody. The sins of yesterday or today will not block your blessing. Number five, the blood of Jesus. That powerful blood of Jesus will wipe away every iniquity and unrighteousness in your life. The reason why a Paul can become an evangelist is the blood. That's why the Bible says it's not by power, it's not by might, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's the blood. It's the blood of Jesus. When you come to him genuinely and say, I, am, I need help. If you come to him genuinely, you will find out he will make you a brand new person. And any one of you that is here today, no matter what you have done in the past, today if you genuinely come to Christ, if you genuinely rededicate yourself to him, God will make you new in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. I promise I will go a little deeper in the second service for those who were at the first. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. If we open it together, Romans 8, 1 to 2. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. We walk not after the flesh, but after the... Spirit. And verse 2 says, 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Who is God talking about this morning? There is no... Con Stop living in the past. Stop living in the past. Oh, pastor, I killed somebody. So what? Welcome to the family. Are you the first person that killed somebody? So kill somebody. Oh, pastor, my case is too bad. I'm a fornicator. I'm a woman. Are you the first? Welcome to the club. Once you give your life to Jesus, he says there is no more condemnation. So the first thing, the first point in this passage, there is no more condemnation for you. I say it one more time, there is no more condemnation for you. Amen. Jesus has forgiven you, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Stop looking backwards. Oh, it is the problem that I made, the mistake I made some years ago that is still haunting me. It's a lie. The enemy will want you to be looking backwards. But God is saying you look, you look forward. The enemy will say to you, you remember what you did? You are bad. You say to the enemy, no, I don't remember what I did. I remember where I'm going. That should be your answer. I don't want to remember what I did. All I know is that the Bible says there is no more condemnation. Number two, every curse that has been placed upon your life is reversed in Jesus' name. People make mistakes. And some of those mistakes have attracted curse. Whether you like it or not, some people that you offended have cursed you. Some of them are powerful. It may be your father, it may be your mother. They've cursed you. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every curse that is still working in your life is reversed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Somebody was telling me during the week, getting so upset. Say somebody, somebody cursed me. Calm down. Calm down. Can anybody curse whom God has blessed? Is there somebody here that God has blessed? No curse will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Number three, you are free. You are free from bondage. You are free from fear. You are free from death. There are some people because of what happened in your past. You are still being tormented. Maybe you still you, you see sleep and see and, and, and see spirits in your dream. You, 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 you feel like going to a program, but you don't want to go because you are ashamed. You are still living in bondage. If they see me, they, they, they will remind me of my past. You can no longer be you because you are afraid of condemnation. The old you is dead, man. The old you is dead. Don't wake him up. Don't wake him up. The old man is dead. You are free. Free from bondage. Free from fear. And anybody that is expecting you not to live your life because of your past, God will silence them. Amen. Number four, you will not die before your time. Amen. Some people, because of their mistakes, they've been sentenced to death. It is true. As I was getting ready for this sermon yesterday, I, I began to wonder, who is it, Lord, that is in this kind of situation? Who is it, Lord? Because I, I could sense what God was saying. 
And I don't know who you are. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will not die before your time. Amen. Number five. The final one. Whoever it is that has pronounced that sentence over your life. That sentence of death. The sentence of death over you is reversed in Jesus' name. Amen. And why do I say so? Because the Bible is very clear. So who is it that speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Who is it that opens their mouth and speaks and it comes to pass when God has not commanded it? I pray over your life. Whether it is you that has been sentenced to death, whether it is your wife, your husband, or your children, or anybody in your house, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that sentence is overturned. Amen. Remember the passage we read, Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Romans 8, verse 2. It says, the spirit of life has set me free. From the law of sin and death. Rise on your feet and pronounce it. I shall live and not die. Go ahead and declare it. The law of the spirit of life. Has set me free. Has set me free. From the law of sin and death. I shall live and not die to declare the glory of God. I shall live and not die to declare the glory of God. No more condemnation for me. I shall live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord. I shall live and not die. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You, your household, none of you will die young. Every curse that has been placed upon your life is reversed in Jesus' name. Amen. From today, you will live your life the way you want it. Amen. Your past will not haunt you. Amen. Your past will not determine your future. Amen. The real you, the glorious you, the marvelous you, Amen. the miraculous you, the wonderful you we manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. You can take your seat. I want to invite you to the lover of your soul. You know I said it is the blood of Jesus. When you come to the blood, it wipes away your past. So if you are here this morning, you have not come publicly to God, to Jesus. I say congratulations. Because when you come to Jesus publicly, you say, I am switching side. I am switching to the side of Jesus. Nobody can harm you anymore. In 1997, August 1997. 1997 is a long way from here, right? That's about 22 years ago. When I became born again. August 10, 1997. A few days before that day, I was praying the way I was raised to pray. In the Aladura way. That's how I was raised to pray. I was in the, you have a room. I was praying. 
And then I heard the voice. This is not the way to worship me. Ah, who is talking? I, I knew I had a voice. So I was confused. This is not the way to do it. How? Yes, do you do it? I was confused. So I stopped. I stopped. I went into the parlor, confused. I knew I had a voice. So I turned on the TV. Lo and behold, as I turned on the TV, I saw Lateran Assembly. Pastor Tunde Bakari was preaching. Ah, can this be a coincidence? I just came out now from where I had a voice saying this is not the way. I turned on the TV, I saw. Ah, I caught my wife. Next Sunday, we are going to that church. I slept that day. As I slept, I saw a woman. Complete black. Black blouse. Black wrapper. Black edger. She said to me, if you go to that church, we will deal with you. When I woke up, I wasn't yet born again, no. But something inside me said, if where I am going, if there is God there, this woman can't do me anything. So I went to Ikeja that Sunday. I went past her to the and said, we will have to give his life to Jesus. I was among the first that came out. 22 years after. I am still strong and healthy. Because if Jesus is on your side, nobody can touch you. You are here this morning, you want to come to Jesus. As they take the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. Just come forward, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. God bless you, come. Come. Let's clap for them as they come. All our sins and grief to God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just keep coming. You want to come to Jesus. Let's keep clapping for them. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. If you come to Jesus. If you come to Jesus, you are safe. You are safe. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. Keep coming. God bless you, my brother. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. There is power. There is power in the name. There is power in the name. There is power in the name. Come, come to Jesus. Oh, can we find our friends so faithful? God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Oh, Jesus. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Come, come to Jesus. God bless you. Come, come. Let's clap for them as they come. Come, come. How we can love. There is power in the name. But we the Lord of death. There is power in the name. God 
God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Jesus, I have come to you. I have no place to run to. I have no one else to run to. Please save me. Please help me. Don't let my past destroy my future. And don't let the enemies of my destiny rejoice over me. I hand over my life unto you. Father, take over from now on. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please follow my sister that is waving to you. God bless you. I want to make another call. You are already born again. But you know you are the reason for this sermon. Your past is still haunting you. Or you know that people are on your case. It doesn't matter how many they are, they will fail. Or you are still struggling with something, some sort of iniquity. You love God with all of your heart. But you keep going back to what is wrong. After the first service, this is the passage God gave me. Put it on the screen, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 22 to 24. In that passage, Apostle Paul said, I delight in the law of God. After the word man, I, I love God. Apostle Paul is saying, I love God. I want to serve God. I want to please God. But when you get to verse 22 and 23, say, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Another law warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. I say I don't want to sin again but I keep going back to doing what I know is wrong. And then verse 24 it says, who oh wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of death. It's possible you are here you've made up your mind to please God but you're still going back to your vomit. The same God that delivered Paul will deliver you. Or you are under torment of the enemy. Please come as you take the song. What a friend we have in Jesus. God will set you free finally. What a friend God bless you. we have in Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Talk to God. Talk to God. Say, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of sin? Talk to God. Talk to God. Father, please help me. Father, help me. Father, help me. Father, help me. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to live right. But I keep going back. I keep going back to my vomit. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Oh, 
Jesus, take it to Jesus, take it to Jesus. and your daughters unto you. There is power in the blood and there is power in the name of Jesus. Everyone that has come to you this morning, the power to be new again. Father, give unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, it is written in the name of the Lord. It's a strong tower. The righteous run into it and it is safe. Everyone that is under torment, anyone that the enemies of destiny are tormenting right now, Lord, I hide them in your name. Amen. Keep them safe, oh God. Amen. Concerning you, your future will be all right. Amen. You will shine again. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. You will not go back to your vomit. Amen. This time around, you will not return to life of sin. Amen. And those who are still looking at you with the eye of yesterday, those who think, oh, we know you now, you tell them, no, the old man is dead. The new you will manifest from today in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. What a friend we have in Jesus. God bless you. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh. Brethren, let's stretch our hands towards our pastor and let's begin to bless God for the revelational word that comes, that God releases unto him. Let's thank God that the word will manifest also in our lives. Let's pray that the strength for an elevated anointing that the Lord will release from heaven, that the Lord will strengthen him. He will not be tired. He will not be weary. And even as he has proclaimed and decreed in our lives, double of such, the Lord will release unto him. That the Lord will strengthen him, his family, in his career. And everywhere he goes, the mercies of God will locate him. Father, we we'll thank you. We we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. If you receive that shout, hallelujah. Titus in the house, just come forward to honor the Lord with your tithe. Whether you have it here or you wired it through the week or you are paid or you have a check, whichever way, just come forward to honor the Lord. And that is, they are coming forward, the choir will give us a hymn. All are enjoying to please stand up and honor the Lord as the hymn is going on. Choir, please. Wow. 
Titus, please know that the box in front of me is for ordained ministers in Redeemed Christian Church of God, while the boxes on the right and left we can use. A rich man was trying to tell God how faithful he is, and he told God in Luke 8:12. He declared that he fast twice a week and he give tithe of all that he possesses. You are doing same like the rich man in the New Testament. And because of that, I'd like you to begin to lift your tithe and begin to speak with God. To tell God I have come to honor you because you are God. I've come to present this to you because you have commanded and because I have obeyed you, Father, I'm asking that you break protocols on my behalf. That you bring fruitfulness into your life. That the doors you knock will begin to open. That testimonies will begin to manifest in your life. That opportunities will begin to show forth. Open heaven and you begin to manifest your full potential. Now you get to a level of not God that will bless you. You say, ah, God is too much. Begin to pray. Begin to talk to God. That your ban will expand. Begin to bring your prayer to a close. Father, we worship you. Because not a word of yours will go without fulfillment. Therefore, Lord, we ask that everything you have decreed on the life of your children... Let it come to pass in Jesus' name. Father, we are praying also, O oh Lord, that by the reason of casting up this tithe, before it hits the box, let it ascend unto you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that the meditation of their heart and the word of their mouth be acceptable unto you, our Redeemer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Just cast your tithe. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I'll read Deuteronomy 15 verse 10. It says, you shall generously give to him and your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this thing, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and you in all your undertakings. It is time to give unto God. It is time to package our offering and give him the best Please don't give God tattered notes. Don't give God the money you cannot give to a beggar. Our God is not begging. Give him the best of the best. Give him clean notes. And the God that sees your heart will bless you. Let's rise up as we dance to the glory of God. And when you're coming, when you're coming, ensure you're dancing. You are dancing with all your heart because God sees a cheerful giver. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. You believe that Jesus made all things. I want you to give you give him your dancing offering this morning. Hallelujah. Summer. Winter, autumn, spring, mountain, blue skies, and the sea, rainbow, sunshine, and the tree. Jesus, maker of them all. Jesus, Daddy.
God are over, you are hell should die. You are great, you are greater than the greatest. You are higher than the highest. You are better than the best. You are hell should die. You are the lily of the garden. You are my God, you are my shepherd. You are the shepherd of my soul. You are the almighty. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the offering of your children. Father, Lord, as they have given, they will never lack. As they have given, they will never sorrow. As they have danced unto you, their legs will never be broken. Because they have come joyfully. Because they have come rejoicing. Celebration will never cease in their home. We say thank you, Lord, for accepting our offering. Father, Lord, we sanctify the offering in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise Master Jesus! Hallelujah. 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 How many of you have been truly blessed today? You've been really, truly blessed. That blessing shall be permanent in Jesus' name. God bless you. A few reminders. I think God has been so wonderful today. So we are going to, when we get to closing the service in another 10 minutes, instead of usual prayers, we just praise God. We just praise God. We just, we just praise God. We just praise God. We just praise God. We just praise God. It's, it's amazing what God, what God is doing in our lives. It's truly amazing. Just a few reminders. The scholarship program is still on. The application will come to an end next Sunday. So if you have not yet submitted the application uh, concerning your children, if you qualify, please know that the application will close uh, at the end of service next Sunday. So for those who may not be familiar with the criteria for you to qualify. The parent must be members of LifeGate Parish for at least two years. We want to be sure that you are not just passing by, that you are actually a full member of this church. But I think I have the permission of the committee uh, to please uh, extend it for those who may not have spent two years but you have spent at least one year. Uh, go ahead and apply as well. Your, your application will be considered after they have finished with those who have spent two years and above. So it's possible, you know, there might still be some uh, financial capability available to take care of additional candidates. So if you have spent at least one year in this church, please go ahead and submit if you meet the remaining conditions. 
the parent must attend house fellowship at least twice a month. In other words, you love God. You, you love to be where people of God gather together. Number three, the parents who are workers in life gate will have an added advantage. So if that parent is an usher, in choir, in children's church, or any department, that child will have an advantage because the parents are workers in the church. At least one of the parents is a worker in the church. Number four, the parents must be deemed unable to fund the school fees. But this is supposed to be for people who cannot afford to pay those school fees. So by the time they interview you and they find out that you can afford the school fees, your application will be rejected because this is meant for those who have financial difficulty. Uh, number five, scholarship will be funded by members and other kind-hearted people and organizations. So these are, this is going to be a program that we will fund ourselves. There might be people here that say, well, God has blessed them enough. They are able to send their children to school. But they can also send other people's children to school. There are people like that that, that, that God will use. Uh, and those people, I'm sure, they will come forward when they see the children that are successful. Because I don't think you should be happy if you have money to, to help a child and that child is out of school. I don't think you should be happy keeping the money to yourself when that money can benefit somebody else. You know, so for those of us who, those people who are in that category, I plead with you, let somebody else be able to succeed in life. Number six, all the forms we close, like I said, we're going to start it this week, but we started it last Sunday. So we're going to leave it till next Sunday to close the application. And then finally, the application will be 100% of school fees. It's going to be full scholarship. So once the child passes through all the uh, uh, conditions, that child will no longer have to depend on the family again till the end of university. So if you are a parent and you are financially challenged, please go through the process. If you are successful, you know that at least concerning this child, you won't have to pay one cover again till the end of secondary school. And then for those who may be specifically gifted among those children, that if we find out there are some of them that are really talented, I mean, people will like come first or second in their class. I mean, they are really good. Their own scholarship will be extended to university. So we'll, we'll take them all the way, all the way to, to the university. My prayer is that God will bless at least a child or more through the system in Jesus' name. Our WhatsApp number, let's put that number on the screen. Uh, I know so many people have joined the church in the last few weeks, so please take note of the number they will put on the screen. Uh, this number, you have to save it on your phone for you to be receiving the daily blessings. Every morning, as God lays it in my heart, I send a blessing. How many of you have been receiving it every day? So for those who have not been receiving it, you can join us. You can join us by saving this number on your phone. And just save it as Life Gate Parish. And then you will send a message. You will send a message to this phone. And say, add me, member. And then you put your name. Don't send a text message. This is not SMS. You send it through WhatsApp. You first, you save the number. The reason why you have to save the number, if the number is not saved on your phone, if we send you a message, WhatsApp will block it. Because it will consider it as, you know, a spam. You are just a, a message that is not wanted. But when the phone number is on your phone, WhatsApp will allow it to reach you. So save the number, then send a message to the number. Please add me, member. Indicate your name. And as from today, you'll be receiving all the reminders, blessings, and then every morning before you go to work or your way to work, you will receive that word of blessing. The third service will start at 11. Uh, so please remember we have three services. This is the second service. The first service is at 7.30. 
the second one at 9, and then the third at 11. Um, we also remember that we have prayer sessions for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You are pregnant already, or you are still waiting to see the manifestation. We have a prayer, special prayer session for you immediately after first service downstairs in the pavilion. And if you are a single, trusting God for a husband or wife, we also have a prayer session for you after first service in level one. As you pray, and as we pray with you, this year your joy will be full in Jesus' name. I say your joy will be full in Jesus' name. Please also remember if you are challenged with food, we feed 200 people, at least 200 people every Sunday. Uh, so if you are one of those, please don't be shy. Uh, just go to the food bank. After the service, after the second service, they will be there. At least 200 people uh, we feed every Sunday. God will continue to provide for you in Jesus' name. First timers, immediately after the service, go downstairs to the pavilion. We have a small gift for you. And then the team will also share with you additional information. And when you are going after service, every day, remember to say this thing. Every, every time we meet in church, at the end of service, you say this, the following. God bless you. We love you. God will make a way for you. So you look for somebody, two or three people. If you are a brother, you look for at least three brothers. Give them a hug. And say to them, God bless you. Have a great week. Just say a word of prayer to somebody. If you are a sister, look for at least three sisters. Give them a hug and prophesy into their lives. Are we ready to appreciate God? Are we ready to give God extra dance? Let's rise on our feet. You see, the song that came to my mind, maybe you can help me to sing that one before you continue your own. That song says, the name of Jesus. That name makes my head to swear. Do, do we know that song? We know the song. Let's go ahead. It makes my head to swear. Hallelujah. Oruko Jesu, Oruko Jesu, Oruko Jesu, Oruko Jesu, no more me who Dance for the Lord. Dance for the Lord. You can come out if you want. You can come out. Oruko Jesu, no more me dara. Oruko Jesu, no more me who
you, the powerful you, the miraculous you, the wonderful you, will manifest from today in Jesus' name. Your past will not destroy your future. Whatever mistake you have made in the past is washed away with the blood. There is no more condemnation for you. You are free from bondage. You are free from fear. You are free from death. All those who are still looking for the old man, we wait in vain. From today, you will shine. You will shine brighter than ever. And you will fulfill destiny. In this church, we will join you to celebrate. And so shall it be. This new week you are going, you will find favor. Everywhere you go, people will just favor you. That song they took, one of the songs says, carry me, they go. God Almighty will carry you into glory. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you.
Shed from my eyes. 